increase in the land. Causing it to grow. The blessing. You blessed him, hedged him around about his house, everything that he has on every side. You've blessed the work of his hand, and the substance is increased in the land. So when people are looking for an explanation, there's a, there's a gospel rap song that I just love. It's by Zanti. He said, when people ask me how I did it, I say, God taught me. He's basically saying, when you look at my life and you look at the success, I have to point to the blessing. The blessing that's over my life. Job, although people on the outside looking in might have looked at Job and said, man, Job just played. Boy, boy Job's smart. He business and this, that, and other, and all of these different things. Take it away from the glory of God. And now God, God is saying, no, I did that. I did it and I'm maintaining it. <clears throat> Psalms 91 <clears throat> verses 1 through 4. <clears throat> I want us to continue to see this, this blessing, this hedge. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge in my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fallen and the noose of pestilence. He shall cover thee with the feathers of of under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. One of my favorite psalms. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. That's, an other, that's another illustration of a hedge because when we look at the, the, the definition of hedge and it talks about concealing, concealing means to hide. The enemy wants to wants to destroy us. He would have to us to, to kill, to be to be stolen from, and, and to be destroyed. But God often hides us. He said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There's some stuff that missed us because God caused the enemy to be blinded. There's some people that meant us ill will. There's some people that concocted stuff that God blocked it because of the blessing. Amen. The enemy sought permission. Don't think the enemy is no, don't think Job the only one the enemy seeking permission to do. Jesus told Peter, the enemy has thought to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. The enemy is desiring to do these things, but my hedge, people get, see, when people don't understand how blessed they are because of the believers in Christ. If, if the church ain't here, if the Holy Spirit ain't here, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is the restrainer. The restrainer means he's holding stuff back. The only reason he's holding stuff back is because of the church. That's why the Bible says when the church gets raptured, all right, Satan, go ahead. They think it's bad now. People marching in the streets, getting shot and tased and all that. That ain't nothing. That, that, that's elementary right there in comparison to the trials and tribulations that are coming on the world. Why? Because the church is hedged. The true believers in Christ are hedged. And guess what? The main ones that are hating should be clapping because we're the one, the reason why a lot of stuff ain't going on. There's a reason why people ain't going in certain jobs and shooting up the place. It's because it's believe. I got some of my believers. Nah, devil, you can't go over there. Uh, there's a reason why this particular uh, uh, city or this particular town ain't going in all the chaos. In there. Nah, I got that. my believer right there on that street right now. My child right there. My, my son over there. Nah, you can't do that over there, enemy. And so people don't even realize the blessing. 
I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my, my God, and him I will trust. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. We're looking at and a few more scriptures. We have to understand that favor follows you. Favor. If you ever want to pray anything, and, you, and, 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 and it's a simplistic prayer, if you have favor and you have wisdom, you got everything that you would ever need to be an overcomer in this life. The favor of God and wisdom. Because the favor of God will cause things to come to you. The favor of God will cause things to be handed to you. Now, once it's in your hands, now wisdom will cause you to be a good steward of it. Amen. Favor and wisdom. You want to pray anything at Lord, I pray, I pray divine favor today with man and with you, Lord God. I pray divine wisdom today that when the favor comes, I know how to operate in it and what to do with it. Favor and wisdom. Ruth, <clears throat> chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Oh, you don't have Ruth? Chapter, it was on there. That's fine. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I'll read it. Ruth, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's... Not, let me back up. Um. Long, long story uh, short, you can go back and read Ruth. The book of Ruth is an excellent story. It's a depiction of Jesus Christ. He's our kinsman, redeemer. Um, <clears throat> Naomi had two sons that ended up dying. Uh, I'd love to get into this text uh, at another time because there's so many nuggets. I'm just going to go past it for the sake of time. But uh, Naomi had two, two sons um, and... Um, they died off, and then she had two daughter-in-laws from those sons, Orpah, not Oprah, everybody said Oprah, they went Oprah, it was Orpah, <laughs> and Ruth. Orpah basically said, peace, I'm gone, you, you ain't got no more sons, because Ruth, basically, Naomi tried to talk them out of following her, she says, I'm going to go back. They had left the land because of the famine, and then they were returning back. She says, don't follow me. I, I'm old. I don't have any. She said, even if I could, you know, have more kids, are you going to wait around for them to grow up so you can marry them? So or Orpah says, basically, peace out. I'm gone. Ruth says, no, I'm going to follow you. Your God is going to be my God. So she follows her back into uh, Bethlehem. And so now <clears throat> Naomi, which matter of fact, Naomi, just to let you know, Naomi happened to be by birth a Moabitess, which is someone that was born to God, but she said, I'm going to make your God my God, which is symbolism of Gentiles receiving Jesus Christ. And so here's the story picks up. They're back in the land, and Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, <clears throat> of her husband, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, let me, go down, let me go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, go, my daughter. And she went and she came and gleaned in the field <clears throat> after the reapers. And her hap, which is another, that's old English for, and she happened to light on the part of the field. She happened to come to the part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was her kindred of Elimelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Long story short, the Boaz, she found favor in the sight of Boaz. Boaz told the reapers to basically leave stuff. For Ruth. <laughs> Just leave stuff <clears throat> laying around for Ruth. Because she happened. See, there's not the Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The blessing is he will be a lamp unto your feet. That's why when it talks about he will see when good cometh, and he will not see when good cometh. We have to be able to see Ruth what she she didn't. 
She was being led by the Spirit and didn't even know. I'm, I'm just going to go over here and go to this part of the field. She could have went to anywhere. Nothing just happens. If I can tell you how many coincidences happen to line up like dominoes and everything like that, we go to a meeting with, uh, and this is just in the realm of, of business, we go to a meeting one time, don't get a business deal. We meet a guy there who happens to own a, a cleaning company, three months later calls me up and says, hey, Johnny, um, I got this contract that I can't, you know, I can't fill. Uh, this was this was last year. He said, Johnny, I got this contract uh, that I that I that I can't do anything with. My hands are tied. I'm 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 fairly busy. I'm just going to give it to you. Nobody gives you. Let me let me say this. Nobody gives you contracts. Not no seventy five hundred thousand dollar worth of contract. That's what this contract was worth. Like. Nobody does that. He said, I'm going to give it to you. In other words, I'm going to drop it for you. I recognize that as the favor of God because we went into this meeting looking for one thing. That's what I'm talking about when we're talking about seeing things and trying to make sense of stuff. God said, I already had it set up. I that meeting that you had that you thought was for one thing was for something else down the line. But I had to line it up so that it would come back around the way that I needed to come back around. That's why God doesn't do anything that's just haphazardly. Here Ruth is happening to come to the part of the field that belongs to, 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 to Boaz, and Boaz recognizes her, not by accident, but by divine purpose. God caused her to be born, now, now married into this family. She's now basically blessed. She met her Boaz. A lot of people use that terminology, Boaz and everything. That's your, that's your Boaz, you know. But that's where that come from. <laughs> and so the blessing was on Ruth's life already because she had chosen to follow Jesus. For without me, you can do nothing. The blessing is on your life because of I'm in your life. Abide in me and I in you. I will cause things to happen. I tell people, you can, you can, be, the most, you can be educated. You can be all of these different things. But without the blessing, we need the blessing. Seasons. Seasons. Deuteronomy chapter 28. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass, if thou will, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, <clears throat> and to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. All he's saying is just obey me. Just be obedient. Just follow me. And all the blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. God has shown me this so many times. There's so many times when we're looking and God's saying, that's not the way I operate. Not saying that you shouldn't have expectancy, but the way that I'm going to bless you, when you think about something, someone being overtaken, it's not from the front. It's from behind. All these blessings shall come on you and overtake you. And so... When God does the blessing, I've seen it happen in so many different instances. It comes out of nowhere. And he does that so that we can't say we had a hand in it. And all these blessings have come on thee and overtake thee, and thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. And then he goes on and he just talks about the blessing. Blessed shalt thou be in the city. Blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shalt be the fruit of thy body. That's health. Blessed shalt be the fruit of thy ground and the cattle and the increase of thy kind and the flocks of the sheep. And blessed be thy basket and thy storehouse. Talk about your finances. Blessed be when thou comest in and blessed be when thou, thou goest out. Everywhere you're going, you're, you're blessed and you're blessed to be a blessing. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thee. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before you seven ways. That's why we don't get intimidated and we don't get distraught and we don't get 
frustrated when things happen. On Friday, me and Lady Brenda, we were so frustrated. We were just we were dealing with we were dealing with dad stuff and, and people in the nursing home and they want to do this and, and they talking about this and you need to have this and this and this is going to happen and this, that, that. And it got to a point where see, you have to be perceptive in the spirit and understand what's going on. And so it felt like oppression was trying to overtake us. But what we do, we recognize that we have weapons. We turn on some worship music and we just turn on some praise and we just start worshiping God. Guess what? Magically, we felt better. Why? Because the enemy is coming to attack you in, 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 in areas, in ways in which you're not necessarily ready for at the time, but we always have that pistol on our side. It's just like somebody breaking into your home in the middle of the night. You fumble around for your weapon. Once you find your weapon, now you armed and you're ready. The same thing in the spirit realm. Whenever that oppression comes on you, whenever those thoughts come on you, you got to recognize it. No, I'm devil, I recognize where you're at. I recognize what you're doing. I'm going to turn on some worship music. It ain't got to be a Sunday morning. It ain't got to be a Wednesday night. I'm just going to turn on some worship music and I'm going to praise God and watch the enemy scatter. He said he'll come in one way and he'll scatter seven ways. The enemy don't want to deal with praise and worship because it confuses him. What do, what do you mean? You going through all of this and I done brought all of this on you and your answer to it is praise and worship? Yep. My victory is in praise and worship. Our, our, our battle stance is in praise and worship. And it says, after he's caused the enemy to flee before you seven ways, the Lord shall command the blessing in thy store upon thee and in thy storehouse. I'm commanding the blessing. The blessing has already been commanded. And in all thy set as thy hands to, he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee in a holy people unto thyself, as he has sworn unto thee. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways, and all the people of the earth shall see, and thou shalt be called by the name of the Lord. That's a beautiful way to be called. I'm called by the name of the Lord. When you see the family of God, he, that's, that's one of his kids. That's, that's one of the Lord's kids right there. And they shall be afraid of thee. And afraid means they shall have reverence. Now, everybody ain't going to have reverence like that in the sense of where they won't be respectful all the time. But they will have a godly reverence that they won't even understand. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods in the fruit of the body, in the fruit of the cattle, in the fruit of the ground, in the, in the land the Lord swear unto thee, to thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give rain unto the land in his season. It goes that season. In his season. And to bless all the work of thy hand, and thou shalt lend Unto many nations, there goes that lender. I, I'm going to make you the lender. I'm going to make you the owner. I'm going to make you the head. And not the tail. I've already done it. And thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. God is going to do it in this season. Uh, I've, been, I've been hearing it in, in my spirit. I, I, I'd be lying if I told you I knew how. <laughs> but I know in my spirit that he's going to do it. When I say in this season, it's going to happen rather quickly. It's going to happen rather quickly. God is not, and, 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 the, and the reason why it's going to happen in a way in which we can't, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a practical person. Lord, how, okay, maybe I need to do this over here, and maybe I need to do this. He says, no, the only way you can prepare is to prepare your heart. Prepare your heart and prepare your spirit. When I when and, and when I and when the blessing overtakes you, all you can do is point to his lead. That's all you can do. One last scripture in Psalms twenty three, verse six. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Goodness and mercy following you. All the 
the days of your life. All the days of your life. Not sometimes, not, 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 not this year and not next year and not this month and not the following month. All the days of your life. <clears throat> when he causes you to come into properties and to come into ownership of land, he's going to do it because the ones who have the titles, the one who have the experience, are not going to give him the glory. He's going to do it because he knows that you're going to attribute it to him. He spoke that to me. I was telling Lady Branham that I, I, I got to tell, I got chills, and I started to cry because <clears throat> God is so awesome. He's going to do it because he knows your heart. Glory be to God. There are so many people walking around with gifts and talents. There are so many people that have the resources that refuse to acknowledge where it came from. He will cause the weak things of this world to confound the mighty. He's going to cause the, the people who, who don't have the experience, who don't have the wherewithal, who didn't go to school for it, who didn't acquire uh, an inheritance for it. He says, I'm going to do it so that they can point to me. When they look for a reason, when they look for a uh, how did she do it, a uh, how did she get it, in which she says Jesus did this. God did this. I don't know how I got all that. I don't know how I got all those properties. God did it. Amen. And so now when God gets the glory, the kingdom is now being expanded because now there are some people who say, I know I ain't got the education. I know I ain't got the, uh, the, the money or the wherewithal, but I know that if she hooked up with Jesus and got it, and God is no respecter of persons, God is no respecter of persons. God is changing the season. God is changing the season. The book. It's not about you. I don't even do this. I don't, I just, I just say, I did it. The book is not about you. It's about the people that God is going to bless through the book. The enemy is not happy with you moving forward with the project. You have to be ready because there are people in the family who will rise up yes. against you because of the project. But it ain't about them. It's about God. Amen. And so when God brings it to manifestation, just like I said a few weeks ago, we got to be ready to let some people fall off. Amen. We got to be ready to let some people cut them own selves off. We got to be ready to let some people not answer your phone call, not answer your text, get mad at you, get upset because of the blessing. See the blessing. See the enemy can use people because he's upset with the blessing. Job didn't do nothing but be Job. Here comes the enemy. He's upset with the hedge. I can't get through. You bless him. You blessed her. You blessed the house. You blessed everything that she set her hands to. You blessing this and you blessing that. I can't get to her. I can't get to him. But I can definitely allow the people around them that say they love them to attempt to wreak havoc. But be prepared. God said the preparation has got nothing to do with the, the stuff. The stuff, he says, I got the wisdom. I got the wisdom already for you. I got the wisdom already for you to handle and manage what I'm going to give you. I need you to prepare your heart for the walkaways, for the changing of the attitudes. Prepare. 
And then now, because there's a saying, it's not scriptural, but it is true, new level, new depth. I'm, I'm, now I'm ready. I'm re I, I see this. I, it'd be different if I wasn't prepared. It'd be different, Lord, if you weren't speaking to me today and you weren't telling me you about to give me. But then when you give me something, I already know that there's some responsibility attached to it. I already know that there's going to be some hate attached to it. I already know that there's going to be some despisement attached to it. But I'm already ready, devil, in the mighty name of Jesus. And so now, the time now is to now fortify. Fortify. Fortify means I'm going to continue to pray if I got to go on a fast, if I got to get into more praise, if I got to get into more worship. I'm going to fortify my spirit so that now I'm prepared to walk into this new season. I'm prepared to walk into this new season. Not that I need any new management skills again. Not to be fair. It's, it's, God's, going to get, God's already gave you the wisdom. He's already got it. He's going to activate it when it needs to be activated. He's going to say this. This is what you need to do with this. This is how you're going to need to do it. This is what you're going to need to do. This is the person you need to talk to. This is where, He's got all of that. He said, I need you to prepare it another way. Your heart. Prepare your heart to be strong. To be diligent. To stand in the face of adversity. And be ready. Like what Jesus said. Who is my mother? Who is my brother? Who is my, who, who is, except them that's doing the will of the Father. We on kingdom business. Anybody ask you, I got kingdom business to do. The Bible says, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. Everybody that's anointed. Don't, 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 don't put your mouth on them. Don't put your hands on them. Don't try to get in their way because I'm protecting them. And I'm protecting the advancement of the kingdom of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Yes, to your way, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, let's pray with Jesus. Oh, let's pray with Jesus.